It is 3.28 p.m. and we just finished um, virtual training for the day. Um, and then we have our first big test today. My group leaves for the um, hangar at 6.35 this evening. So we'll probably be testing around 7 p.m. At this point, I feel like my brain is fried. Um, about to pop out at the top of my head because we learned so much today, like so, so much. Um, like I've said in previous videos, like it is a lot of information to take in and I don't think people realize that. I don't think people give flight attendants half of the credit that they deserve. Like we talked about everything today. There's so many acronyms in my head and FAA regulations and oh my God. So yeah, I am, I'm gonna take a short nap and then I'm gonna study a little bit for the test because this is one of the major tests. Um, you take it, you have to get an 80%. If you don't get an 80%, then you can retake it one time. If you fail the retake, then you go home. And out of all of the tests, you only get two retakes. So like if I fail this one today, do the retake and pass it. Then if I fail another test, um, then I think I get a, a retake for that one or either that's it. But like I said, it's very strict, very rigorous. Um, so I'm gonna take a nap and then I'm gonna study, um, you know, before I leave for the shuttle. Some people are about to leave in like an hour because their shuttle comes at 4.30. So they don't have much time to rest or to um, study. So I'm thankful because my pod is in the middle. Like there's five pods and I'm pod C. So we're usually in the middle, like when we have to leave or, um, you know, go somewhere or do something. We're usually in the middle of the, the day or the time. So we're not early and we're not as late. So glad about that. Um, so I ironed on break so I could get dressed and get ready. Um, I mean, I'm dressed today, but what I'm gonna wear to the hanger is going to be more professional. Um, I don't think I've ever talked about like the requirements and the regulations that we have. Like it's very, very strict. Our um, attire for training is probably more strict than when you um, finish training. Like we had very detailed specific instructions on things that we can wear. Um, we can wear black skirts. They have to come below the knee. It can't come above the knee when you lift your arms. Um, we can do black turtlenecks. We can do a button-up shirt, like a long button-up shirt, but it has to be black or white only. Um, black professional slacks are allowed, and they have to be professional slacks. They can't be like yoga pants. They can't look like workout attire at all. Um, then we could do a black cardigan as a cover-up or um, like a black sweater. The shirt had to have a has to have a collar. If you're gonna do a button-up shirt, it has to have a collar. Um, and then, like I said, you can do a black turtleneck. But the wardrobe is very specific for women and men. The shoes that you wear, um, we can only wear a specific type of shoe. And the sole of the shoe has to match the shoe. Like they have to be black and everything has to be black. Like there can't be any white thread. There can't be a brown sole, anything. Like every part of that shoe has to be black. It can't be mixed material. Like you can't have leather and patent leather or, you know, something like that. But the requirements for attire is very, very strict. So um, you had to make sure that you had everything before you got here. They do compliance checks, and with the compliance check, they're going to make sure that you are in uniform um, as far as training. You can't have any visible tattoos or piercings. As you see, I have a piercing on my chest. So I um, typically wear, you know, a long sleeve shirt. Um, I also have a piercing in the back of my neck, so I only wear turtlenecks because I make sure that that's covered. I have a tattoo on my wrist, and then I also have one um, on the inner part of my arm. So I can only wear long sleeve shirts. This one right here on my wrist, um, it's really light, but you can still kind of see it. I have to put makeup on that because even though I'm wearing long sleeves, if I were to point or raise my arm and if my sleeve goes down and a trainer sees that tattoo, 
that's a write-up. Even though I'm wearing long sleeves, it, it has to be covered by makeup or long sleeve shirts. And I get it. Um, you know, some airlines still don't even allow tattoos. So I'm glad that they do allow it. You just have to cover it. And you can't cover it with a bandage or anything like that. It has to be covered with your uniform and then also makeup. Um, if, you know, you feel like you want more protection. Um, another part of the compliance checks, like they... We did compliance checks a couple of days ago and they literally like make you raise up your shoe so they can see if the bottom is the right color. Um, you have to wear either stockings or socks. Um, if you're gonna wear socks, they have to be black. Your stockings have to either be nude color or black. Um, I do black just because if you have tattoos on your legs and you definitely wanna do black, so those are covered up if you're going to wear a skirt. The uniforms that I chose, I chose the long sleeve shirts, like I said, to make sure that my tattoos are covered. And then I chose a dress and um, business slacks. Another part of the compliance checks, um, they make sure that we have all of our required items. Flight attendants are required to carry certain items um, when you're on duty. And so um, they will check, like they'll randomly, you know, make us pull out one of the items just to make sure that we have it. Um, and so I wrote a list up here on my door. So when I'm leaving, cause I tell you, you make sure that you physically check because that is a write-up and we only get three write-ups before you get sent home. So we are required to have our passport, our badge, um, our EFAD, which is, um, it's basically an iPhone, but it has like all of the regulations and our manuals on there. We're required to have that it has to have at least 80 percent charge and then it has to have the most like we have to have updated it so they they will pull it up and look to see when we last did our update to make sure that we have the most up-to-date information because if we were on a flight and the faa checked and it wasn't updated we could get fined for that so passport work badge um efad has to be 80 percent we have to have our um, ILQR, which is our in-flight operations manual. And that is what we would use if for whatever reason, our EFAD, um, if the battery died or so, it wasn't functioning or whatever. Um, we have to have our cashless sales device, which is what we would use on certain flights, like if people are wanting to purchase things. Um, we have to have a working flashlight, um, a watch that has the second hand, the watch can only be certain colors. So I have a black watch and I have a white watch. Um, and it does have to have that second hand. Like it can't be a digital watch. And during training, it can't be a smart watch. You can have a smart watch once you um, get out of training, but you can't have one for training. And then what else? And then um, every day we have to do our own COVID-19 assessment. So we have to take our temperature and um, go in. We have an app. And we have to document in that app that we took our temperature and that we're not having any symptoms. So it's, like I said, it's pretty intense, it's rigorous. Um, and they are checking to make sure that you are following all of the rules. So yeah, that's, um, that's a little bit about flight attendant training. And this is just training. So once you are um, on the job, then yeah, you definitely have to follow those rules. One of our trainers was telling us today about how one of her friends was fined um, $25,000 because she didn't have her credentials. Oh, and another thing we have to have um, once we do become actual flight attendants, the FAA issues um, flight certificates. And it's a little card, you know, saying that we are legally flight attendants. And so we have to carry that with us all the time. So if you don't have that, that is a fine from the FAA. So yeah, it's pretty strict and it's a lot. Um, to deal with so this is what i'm gonna wear today to go test i have my black turtleneck um i have a skirt that goes below my knees oh and then um blazers yes we can wear blazers so i have black blazers and then my black tights right here and then the shoes that i brought um because i like to be comfortable you can do a heel but the heel can only be so high um but i bought these black shoes so if you notice the sole is black this is like everything's black um, so yeah, they're very strict about that. Um, 
what else what else what else what else what else i think that's it for now um yeah so i'm gonna rest and then get ready to go take this test and hopefully i will have another video for you tomorrow and it's not a video of me packing my bags <laughs> i'm just kidding now i feel comfortable about the test um today's information was a lot but i'm gonna look over it you know right before we leave and just make sure that i have it all so yeah talk to you later